the Wholeness Network. Awaken to the reality of wholeness. Robin Johnson is known as the Heart Whisperer. She has a gift for seeing the soul and helping people unlock the wisdom and healing of their own heart. She is trained in heart-centered therapy and is a Reiki master and teacher. Robin holds classes and retreats, as well as a private practice working one-on-one with clients. She is also a founding partner of the Wholeness Network. Today we get to sit down with the official heart whisperer, (laughs) the creative of the Wholeness Network, and the probably the the backbone <laughs> that I get to crawl up on and go for a ride every once in a while. <laughs> but um, we're excited to be here with you, Dr. Jeff Smithley. We're going to Thank explore you. you for the next little while. Um, okay. But it always starts <laughs> with the beginning. So tell us a little bit about your beginning in coming to where you are at. What, what was the beginning of that story? I think for me, the beginning for most of us probably started in childhood. Mm-hmm. There were some traumatic things that happened in my growing up years that left me with a lot of unresolved emotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was holding a lot of trauma, a lot of um, just frustration. And as a child, I didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. I, I didn't have any tools. I didn't go to a counselor. I didn't get receive any help in that way and so I just ended up shoving all that emotion Mm -hmm. (laughs) inside of me and uh, turned to sports and just worked it out on the tennis court on my bike Mm -hmm. you know wherever I could get a physical release for all that was going on inside of me Mm -hmm. but eventually as you get married and have children and um, (laughs) I I have four children my husband and I we've been married 30 years at this point, but eventually you got to face it. Yeah. It's too much to hold inside of you. And mm. and so for me, I started looking at what, what was the emotion I was holding on to, what was causing the depression I had. I felt like that depression pretty much followed me from my teenage years mm. for about 20 years of my life. Mm. Um, it was hard. I was up and down a lot, very emotionally fragile, I would say. My family kind of mm-hmm. walked on eggshells mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And so it just became too much mm-hmm. to try and juggle a family and yeah. life and all this emotion. And um, so I found a source of healing. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a, a counselor that also did some energy work. and. Mm-hmm just started to begin the unraveling Mm of (laughs) that, um, those difficulties from my childhood. But what I found was very profound. Mm -hmm. And and in that state of depression during those 20 years, I would look at happy people and think, I I don't know how they do it. There's just, there's no way Mm -hmm. you could just wake up happy every day. Mm -hmm. That just seemed impossible. I felt like those people must be faking it. I yeah. really couldn't believe someone could honestly wake up and be happy wow. every day. And so as I started taking apart all these pieces of trauma and emotion mm-hmm. I'd been holding on to and letting them go, um, I feel now that I do live in that space where mm-hmm. I wake up happy every day and, and it's very genuine. There's nothing mm-hmm. inauthentic about it. Mm-hmm. And yet... I also have bad days. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. those are very genuine too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I but um, those tools and those resources that help me get from there to here mm-hmm. is the motivation really yeah. for what I do today. So if you can travel back to before, I mean, this is what's hard is it's hard to even put words into what that experience was. So what did depression look like to you? What 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 was it? what were you feeling or what was what was the actions that were a result of that? What did that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. For me, um, 
uh, depression wasn't my daily experience. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't happen every day, but it was about 25% of my life. So mm -hmm. maybe for three weeks I could go along okay and then a, a trigger would come up, something would happen. And when the depression started, it would just start spiraling down. So for three or four days, I would kind of head downhill into this mm -hmm. dark hole. And it, it was so dark and so heavy, it would take me three or four days to get back out of it. So, mm -hmm. Was it self-esteem? Would you like think thoughts that were negative about yourself or about your life? Was it, I mean, was it thought or was it just sad emotions? I would say everything. Oh, Definitely yeah. a heaviness. Mm -hmm. So just, um, mm. irrational, th not, not irrational that I would do something right. irrational, but, false um, belief, false. I am the worst yes. daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am the worst friend. I, you know, those yes. extreme thoughts that yes, really can't thoughts. be real. Mm -hmm. How could yeah. you possibly be the worst? Right, 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 <laughs> right. But that felt real. Yeah. I couldn't connect to my goodness. I couldn't remember all the success I had. Mm -hmm. Just in those moments, so clouded by mm -hmm. negative thought, negative emotion, just yeah. so heavy. Yeah. So, so when you you said you went to a uh, somebody did some energy work. Yeah. Yeah. And some people may not be familiar with that. Were you familiar with it? But when you when you encountered it, how did how no. did that go for you? And what were your feelings about it initially? And what, what advice do you have for somebody that's wanting to find out more about it? Yeah. Well, um, for me, I think that people find solutions in different ways. Mm -hmm. And for somebody that's very connected to their mental body, that perhaps a counselor, uh, um, a talk psychologist, therapy. Yeah. talk yeah. therapy is very helpful. Um, for me, I'm so spiritually based. <laughs> and connected energetically. I'm an empath. I feel things. Energy work seemed to be a better source for me because I didn't have to put words to it. Mm -hmm. I could just feel it and release it. Mm -hmm. It didn't always have to make logical sense. Yes. Um, and I think some people are very physical based mm -hmm. and maybe exercise and running and all those things is their therapy, mm -hmm. you know. I wouldn't say that my solution would be everybody's solution, right. but for me, um, it was what really helped. And in this process, the man helped me identify the negative thought patterns that were going on, which sometimes I would find help from at a counselor as well, but then we would tap to release, so you're releasing that energy from the physical body. Mm -hmm. um, we would reframe it with some eye patterning and different things mm -hmm. that helped. To me, I could feel the shift and mm -hmm. the release of emotion in my body. Um, where talking about it just sometimes just stirred it right. all up and then right. it was just sad. It just felt like, because <laughs> the, the mind wants a so, solution. Yeah. And in some cases there isn't a solution. Yeah. Yeah. And that gets tricky sometimes. Sometimes it, it is. Sometimes yeah. it's like, well, if I just don't do that anymore, then I won't yeah. have that problem. <laughs> right. But some of it's not. But for me, I was really holding that emotion. I was storing that emotion in my body. Mm -hmm. And so to connect into the energy of my body and tap into the body yeah. and um, create new visual patterns and all of that really helped it release for me. Mm -hmm. So even the first session, when I left, I felt 20 pounds lighter. I, mm -hmm. I know I wasn't, but the, I, that burden was so yeah. released, it felt that liberating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you're still involved in energy work in some way, right? Yes, so um, I now facilitate that. I, I got trained in Reiki, which helped me learn how to feel the energy of the body. So I'm a Reiki master and teacher. Um, and then I did learn a process called heart-centered therapy that also helps people really connect into their heart and find their answers mm -hmm. within. Mm -hmm. So I um, do that as well for people. So I have my own clients. And that's where I came in because you were my, you were my, you were oh. my twenty pounds off person. You know, <laughs> you were the person that helped me walk away yes. without those. 20 pounds and, and I had the same feeling it was like there was hope at the end of this tunnel <sighs> because I had tried you know you you try it all and then it works it works yeah. but it was it was like okay 
here was something that I could do. I knew I could do it again and again. You know, yes. that's what's helpful. I, here was something, because if I told the story, I could tell that it doesn't help to tell it 400 times. <laughs> right, right. But to have a process that helps you go through it, that, that was helpful. Yeah. And in that time, um, because you incorporated the heart centered therapy into what you do, then you became known as the Heart Whisperer, and that's, <laughs> I got so I, we. I yes. that's how I know you as the Heart Whisperer, and it's such a true statement. But tell us a little bit about taking that that experience of understanding <laughs> that you are a Heart Whisperer. A heart whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also an entrepreneur, and so I had a, a business consultant come in one day, and we had this huge whiteboard, and I was listing all my businesses on the board. I was feeling so diversified between everything and thought I I just can't wrap my head around all of this anymore. It's it's getting to be too much and I'm a professional photographer and I so I've done that and then I was teaching Reiki and having Reiki clients and then I built a wholeness center and so I was trying to manage that and then developing um, this process of helping people with the heart and mm -hmm. so we had all of this up on the board and it just felt so complicated to me and finally we we ended the session and he called me about three days later and he said Robin you think you're so complicated but it's really simple and I said what and he said you only do one thing and I said what do I do mm -hmm. and he said you connect people to their hearts mm -hmm. and he said I just call you the heart whisperer in my phone <laughs> I just started laughing and then I thought, wait, am I that? Yeah. Can I be that? Yeah. Can I can I claim that? And yeah. and it took me a minute, you know, yeah. to say yes, I am that. Mm -hmm. I had to own it. Mm -hmm. But um but I found that point and it's been a beautiful thing for me to help yeah. understand my gift to the world. Yeah. You know, whether you're in front of my camera, <laughs> yeah. uh, I can connect you to your heart and bring out the best yeah. in you, maybe even the best parts of you you've never seen. Yeah. Uh, and, and you incorporate art uh, into your work with the heart as well, yes. right? Yes, so I have a, a little process where if people give me permission to connect to their heart, I can um, receive a message from their heart, what would your heart like you to know? And I paint it on a little teeny tiny canvas. And I took my kids in for before school. I brought them in because I wanted them to, that was just something I wanted them to experience. This was last year or the year before, yeah. I don't remember. And um, it was the neatest experience. And it was so funny because she, with my son, she said, I, she was trying to paint it. And she was like, I don't know how to paint this. And then she, and she said, it's like, it's, like tie-dye well what was so funny is I he had showed me he he had told me just a couple days before I want my signature look to be tie-dye and so it was just but it was perfect for it was it was just who he is because he's so such an individual there's no two tie-dye shirts that are ever the same yeah. you know and that was that was him but it, it was so meaningful to him because it was like well <laughs> it was in there that yeah. information, that that choice he made to to um, define that about himself was there in his yes. heart. Yes, and I the heart wants to speak to yes. us. The heart has so much to teach us and so much to say, and yet we're not practiced in listening to the heart yeah. or tuning in to get our own message. So uh, my preference is always to empower people to learn to listen to and receive those messages, mm -hmm. but. But it has been really special to yeah. uh, be that facilitator sometimes and let people know this is what your heart is speaking to you. Yeah. And for his message, it was that he was one in a million. Yeah. He needed to feel his own divinity yeah. and his own uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And that was playing yeah. out in the clothes yes. he chose. That, yes. that tie-dye is such yeah. a unique yes. pattern or perception. And, and if we could all be okay with that and embrace our uniqueness, yeah. what a gift. So I love that his heart was trying to tell him that. Yeah, it's in the intelligence. Yeah, yeah. what else yeah. do you know about the heart? Teach us about the heart. Oh, gosh. I know well, we, we have all day. <laughs> you, you, do, you do things with couples as well, right? Um, I do. I have a, a retreat for couples. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I bring them in. and. 
the we have I've developed a a retreat called Brave Hearts and mm -hmm. it takes people through a process over two and a half days of really connecting to their heart, understanding the state of their heart. Mm -hmm. Are they even connected? Oftentimes we're not. Right. Um, how to learn to listen to those hearts and identify the emotions we're holding and then use the heart as a tool to help you shift into a better state. Mm -hmm. So when we do that for couples, couples come in and they want their marriage to be healed. Yeah. Um, their but partner's heart to be fixed. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want to fix each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to go so you can be fixed. Right. Um, but the powerful thing is couples have to realize they have to heal individually first. Yeah. The relationship is a result of two people yeah. coming together. So if what those two people are contributing is not whole, mm -hmm. then how can you ever fix a broken relationship and make this whole from two broken pieces? Mm -hmm. so, so possibly to their dismay, we start with the individual. <laughs> they have to start with themselves. But it's so beautiful because as people come to a greater understanding of where their discomfort is and what they're struggling with within themselves, yeah. Um, they can see how their partner is merely reflecting to them what they already believe. Yeah. The belief is inside of you. Mm -hmm. And so when we can heal and change those beliefs, then they come together in this new powerful whole. Mm -hmm. And we can create something new because we're working with new individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's powerful. The Brave Hearts retreat is one of the most powerful things to witness in a, a matter of two and a half days for people to transform. I, it, I've never seen anything like it. And the, the magic of it is, is uh, it's unable to be, I don't think it's, 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 we can match it. I don't think we can describe it. It's just amazing what they can, can do to when they learn this, the connect to their heart and understand yeah. and the, pa the compassion she has to help them Recognize that was what needed to have that that they, they were they had there was something that caused that heart to need to close down and so yeah. let's be with that for a minute see that it needed that and and then we can move towards fixing it so <laughs> yeah it's so well done so well done you recently uh, spoke at yes the homeless network yes yes. Event. Yes. <laughs> and you gave this really wonderful, powerful message, and you talked a little bit about Mother Teresa. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which I thought was really powerful. Tell us something about Mother Teresa. Uh, well, what I loved about her and the quote I shared that Mother Teresa would never attend an anti war rally. Yeah. But she said, if you're going to have a peace rally, invite me. And I think to fight against fighting, where is the love right. in that? To, f to fight against fighting only perpetuates the fight. Yeah. And so to me what I understand her saying is I want to show up in this world in my wholeness, mm -hmm. in my peace. I want to hold that vibration and send that out into the world. Yeah. And so... Um, to, to think or dream or hope or wish that she could join us in this peace rally to teach us, to guide us, to help us. Mm -hmm. um, I was just excited to feel like I could invite her to be here because I, I think she left such a legacy of love. Mm -hmm. if, there, if there was ever a walking heart on this planet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Mother Teresa was one of the great ones. Mm -hmm. And so her ability to connect into the heart, to see others through the eyes of compassion, to serve and to love and to give so fully, um, was a woman that had great peace, I would say, mm -hmm. within herself. And, and that love ripples out in such magnitude Mm. We we don't even realize, I think, the effect that we have on people, even 
even when we're not interacting yeah. directly with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an, example, a, an experience just yesterday. We have a, a common friend that, that lived in the city next to us, and just yesterday I was driving through the town just a few blocks from where she lived, and as I was driving I thought, gosh, something feels different here, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, she moved. Oh, she yeah. her her energy is gone. Yeah. And and she's just this beautiful, sweet, loving angel on this earth. Yeah. And yet I could feel it on wow. the roads in the wow. neighborhood. Yeah. You know, so um if we thought about each of us working on our own internal peace. Yeah. Finding that peace within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then from that space, letting peace ripple out into the world. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen. It, it yeah, will happen. Yeah. It does I, happen. I, I, I resonate with what you're saying. I think part of what she was saying was, don't waste your time and your energy fighting against things. Right. It's so much more powerful and productive to, to do to, to live in your space and go forward for positive things. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't waste your energy with the with the knots. Absolutely. With the do's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that um, what maybe we're, what is natural, I'll say it that way, the natural man yeah. in us, if something yeah. is wrong, it's that person's fault, that policy's fault, that, yeah. you know, the problem is always out there. And so what I hope to teach and what I hope I do is really bring that back to you and say, no, let's look at inside. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take a look at what's really going on within mm -hmm. you. Because when you can find this peace within, then you can create the peace mm -hmm. outside of you. Mm -hmm. For sure. It, it actually is created. Yeah. It just becomes your truth. <laughs> it becomes your experience. Yeah, yeah. So it becomes, there's, there, we don't have to effort it anymore. No. It becomes part of, like, what we do, what right. we are. And I think for me specifically growing up, that peace was not inside of yeah. me. And so I know that feeling, I mm -hmm. know that longing and that angst. And oftentimes we try to um, achieve our way into peace. Yeah. Well, if I just accomplish this and this and this and this, Mm -hmm. Then I'll take have that peace. deep breath and be done. Yes. Yeah. If I could just make this much money, or if I could have this kind of relationship, or mm -hmm. if I had uh, that in my life, then the peace. But we must. We have to start with him. I, I think that's an, that's really a, a two-edged sword too. It hurts us in two ways. When we when we say, if I can do this, 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 and this, I'll have peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Besides that pattern in and of itself being destructive. When we're always saying, when I do this, 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 and this, the inadvertent message we're sending ourselves is, you can't be at peace now, because you're yes. going to be at peace then. Yes. You can't be happy now, yeah, because true. you've decided that's your happiness is there. Yes. Yeah. So you're right. always sending yourself a message, I, I can't be happy, and I'm not at peace. <laughs> and then, heaven forbid, you don't make one of those checklists for whatever reason. Right. Because, and that's the thing that I think is showing up for people everybody's missing one of some of those checklists are being pulled out from underneath us yes and then what do you do mm -hmm. but that's the illusion is that that that's mm -hmm. the, that's one of the points to get to before mm -hmm. the peace can come and some yeah. people are it, it's showing up for people in different ways so we have what, what what did we say the other day everybody's living a plan b <laughs> <laughs> something like that you know like nobody lives their plan a oh yeah yeah and so um so you two yeah. formed the Wholeness Network. Yes. yes. There's a lot of talk out there about wellness. Mm -hmm. Tell us in your mind, what's the difference between wellness and wholeness? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or is there a difference? Yeah, I believe there is. Um, and, ma and it's maybe just semantics, you know, or what we've associated to that word. But mm -hmm. for me, as I, when I created the center that uh, we have a few years ago and had to come up with a name for it. I thought of a wellness center, mm -hmm. but in many ways that conjured up all the physical parts of who we are to me. Mm -hmm. Wellness I equated to healthy eating, 
healthy moving or exercise, you know, mm -hmm. healthy living. And I, I wasn't sure people would put the emotional side into that as well, mm -hmm. where the word wholeness to me, it encapsulates it all, mm -hmm. all aspects of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so... So oh, Serena so Wholeness was born. Yes. Which is your center. Yeah. And tell us about creating that center. What most it has <laughs> that has the duality of a lifetime in that, <laughs> that story. But it's an important part of you yeah. really getting into who you are. That was really yes. pivotal, wasn't it? It was. Um building building that center was kind of the biggest business maybe I had done up to that point. And so I had a lot of doubt and fear about it and uh, one of the things that I learned during that time was to take my questions to God and mm -hmm. and I had prayed my whole life so talking to God wasn't new but yeah. <laughs> but in writing him a letter that was the thing I was challenged to do write him a letter with your questions mm -hmm. and then sit and listen and receive mm -hmm. a message back and so I started that practice as I started Serena and it was incredible what I learned and how I could take the simplest doubt and fear to God and how he could come back and calm my soul about it. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the greatest blessings to me of Serena mm -hmm. is learning to communicate with God in that way. And mm -hmm. so I have journals of his answers, but, yeah. um, but my vision in Serena was much the same as the Wholeness Network, but it started with a physical location. I wanted a place where people could gather, a place where they could feel safe, a place where they could be seen mm -hmm. and acknowledged and heard in their suffering and in their challenges. And so my vision was to have offices that we could rent out so that we could have a multitude of practitioners that mm -hmm. all are natural healing type of modalities. Uh, as well as a classroom so people could come and gather and learn and be taught and and it was quite a ride to actually create yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of challenges along the way so apparently I needed to grow <laughs> I needed to grow up probably well um, but what but it's it's it exists it's and it exists. works and it functions and and we love it it's a beautiful space but that was your message of because I don't think in your letters you were ever given the, the the steps as far as yes put the chair here or yes <laughs> paint that wall this way right which was all the thoughts that are going through your head and all the chaos yes yes and it, but but it brought that's the the, the inner peace the, the yes. peace that you're talking about is that's what you received and then within that state then you could create and fix all those to do's yes absolutely I remember um, an ex a great example of that. There was at one point, um, we we had the building ready. We were all ready to move in, and then uh, found out some things hadn't been done in order with the city regulations. And so, um, so we were kind of yanked out of the building before yeah. we even got our chance to begin, and. And it was supposed to just take a couple of weeks to resolve, and then it was at a couple of months to resolve. Mm -hmm. And then by about six months into it, I had had it. Yeah. I was so frustrated with um, the time and energy that was being poured into this. I just started to really resent the mm -hmm. building. And, and we were waiting for one next step. We needed uh, some kind of licensing or approval from the city to move forward to the next step. And, it just wasn't coming. It just wasn't mm -hmm. happening. And and the one morning in my frustration to God, I'm like, why? Why is this happening? I'm trying to create something so good. Yeah. You know, what yes. is wrong? Yeah. And how can I move this forward? I yeah. don't know. And I'll never forget um, the message that came was that creation is fueled by love. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh gosh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> because I've been pouring anything but love into yeah. this project. I've been angry, frustrated, resentful, yeah. you know, blah, how, blah, blah. How much of that is our whole life, though, where it's like, right. even in our relationships, uh, what? I, I, but I need that first. Yes, yes. yes. You want the love first. Yes. yes. But so I remember texting uh, my two business partners and said, look, 
we need to start sending love to this building. We need to start send love to the architect, send love to the builders, send love to the city people, send love to the building itself. Please take some time this morning and let's fuel this project with mm. love. And within two hours, we got a call from the city and we were able to take the next step. Wow. And it, it was powerful. Oh. It was a powerful lesson. We are such powerful creators. Yeah. If we learn to harness the power of creation within yeah. us, man. And we, we, we definitely need to get into creation because you are like so passionate about creation. But I want to pause in this moment yeah. and say, so for somebody that isn't progressed yet in their understanding of their wholeness, <laughs> <laughs> um, in your state of your depression, what would that have been like to come up against that wall? Would, you know, it would come up against those hardships and that, could you have even began? Oh, no, began. I would have abandoned the project. I, I would not have been able to hold the space for what I was feeling as failure. Yeah, and, and that's why I bring that up, is just to, that to recognize that it's that actually, that the identifying it as a failure is still this false belief. Because right. the same exact action but you didn't believe it as a failure because of the work that you had done and understanding yes. of it made all the difference. It wasn't the physical, it wasn't the building being done. Right. Or not done. Right. And so I hope that people that feel like they're in this state of, of hopelessness can recognize that, uh, like, let's, let's work on this because then we can get into the cre creation. <laughs> and she has a creation class that is going to create amazing experiences for people. And tell us about creating your creation class and how you became so passionate about creation. Ah, oh, I don't know how I became so passionate about creation. I think it's just always been inside of me, but oftentimes our gifts, we don't recognize them. You know, it feels so natural. We just don't think anything. And I had a friend come to me and she said, um, could you mentor me? And I said, well, okay, I'm not really a mentor. I don't know what, what do you want me to teach yeah. you? And she said, teach me how to create. Mm. And I said, everyone can create. And she said, not like you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, you can. I can and you she know, that's said, no. I, that's something I encounter a lot when I counsel with people about their spiritual gifts is yeah. the people tend to look at their own gifts as something that's innate yeah. and they yes. tend to think, oh, anybody can do that. Yes. And they look right past their own powerful gifts sometimes because they feel natural in it. Yes. Right? And she yes. is a natural breed. I've <laughs> witnessed that more than once. Yeah. So I I said, okay, well let me think about that. And and so I started to think, well how do I create? What what do I do? And um I'm really, like I said, a spiritual person and thought, gosh, the greatest creation we could ever learn from is the creation of the world. Right. I mean, what a miracle, what, what a miraculous culmination of wow. oh, yeah. so many things. And so I started studying the, the creation story in the Bible, and it was fascinating to me mm -hmm. to start taking it day by day, step by step, and see the process, even though it's talking about on this day he created the birds, or on this day the plants were created, there's so much beyond. Symbolism. Yes, there's yeah. so much symbolism. And so I started studying that and researching that, and I connected with a man, and uh, he, I said, help me understand this. So we were working together, and, and he said, Robin, I want to challenge you in two weeks. I want you to teach a class on creation. And I said, well, what part? And he said, I don't care. You just got to start getting this out there. And so I said, okay. And so I went home that night, designed a flyer, put it online, in two weeks I'm teaching a class about creation, and had no idea what the content <laughs> was going to be. And so I sat down to start making an outline of what, where I thought we should begin. And it spilled into a seven class series, like within three days I had outlined seven wow. classes, and they were two to three hour classes each. And different steps, different principles, different mm -hmm. um, ways to to receive that inspiration, to connect to that ability to manifest. And 
So anyway, I what's one of your favorite two most of the favorite things? Because I I love to hear about it, but oh. what's one of your favorite? Well, uh, well, I'll just start with the beginning. Yeah, I'll just start with one step Great. because the first thing. Well, actually, there were two things that God did before anything was physically manifested. Mm -hmm. Everything was created spiritually first, yeah. and He spoke it. Mm -hmm. And so if you just looked at those two principles alone, to create something spiritually first means you've got to see it. You've got to have it here. You've got to have a vision of it. You've got to hold an understanding of it. Mm -hmm. and. When people are like, well, I want to create something, but I, I, I want to create this new business, but I'm just not sure mm -hmm. how it's going to work. Well, mm -hmm. if, if you can't even begin to see it, I can tell you, you're going to have a big problem manifesting yeah. it, right? Or they take just a step without, they just take the first step. Or, or yeah, any step, yeah, in any, any step. direction, yeah. and you're going here, 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 yeah. here, here, and you may never end up anywhere that right. resembles anything. Right, right. Right, so to take the time, and, and that is our inclination to just jump in and start, mm -hmm. but to take the time and get clear. Mm -hmm. What is this doing? What is this creation holding? What's the vibration? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose? Who am I serving? What is this becoming? How does it feel? What do I want to receive? What do I want to receive? Yeah. Yes. And so even in creating the wholeness center, I could feel what it felt like to sit in that classroom and be taught. Wow. Even before we had a space or a location, yeah. you know, I knew how did I want people to feel mm -hmm. when they walked in the door? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did I want to hear? What, what did I want to be the activities going on? Mm -hmm. and, and in creating it here in your mind, you can manifest it physically. So that would be one, but also to speak it. Yeah. That's a big step. That's a big step. <laughs> yes. And I remember um, getting the inspiration for the Wholeness Center. It was about two weeks before a big retreat I was doing for Reiki. Mm -hmm. Once a year I did a Reiki retreat for my students. And so this idea came and it was unique because usually I feel like the ideas come from within, but in this circumstance, I really felt like the idea was given to me. Wow. That it, somebody was asking me to create this. And so I, I recognized that and I started to feel it and see it and understand it. But I thought, wait a minute, I've got a retreat in two weeks. I cannot yeah. get distracted. And so I said, God, will you please grant me two weeks? I, I understand it. You put, you put him on hold? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I said, please, could you just give me two weeks? I'll be, I'll be back with you in two weeks. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah. Day point zero five. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, yes, if mm -hmm. you tell everyone at your retreat you're going to create it. Mm. And I, I was there, I think. I was terrified. <laughs> like, well, I don't even know what I'm creating yet. I don't really want to speak that. And he said, <laughs> speak it. And I was so scared because here are all these students that I've built this rapport with, they've come yeah. to trust me, they've come to rely on me, and now, as the grand finale to the retreat, I'm going to get up there and tell them all I'm going to create a wholeness center that I knew nothing about. Yeah. I didn't know how that would even be possible. Yeah. We didn't have a location, I didn't know the numbers, I didn't, there was nothing about it right. that I knew yet. Mm. But I did it. Yeah. And I said, I just want to tell you where I'm going next. Mm -hmm. And if you want to join me on this journey, please come. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be a place for us to gather. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a space that is sacred and holy for healing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to open a wholeness center. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that was the only talk I've ever given where the minute it was done, I burst into tears and started crying like a wow. baby because it was the scariest thing I'd ever done. Wow. You know, I've found when I work with clients, uh, <clears throat> many of them will have these really spiritual experiences and the, 
they'll have them in their head and as long as they're in their head they're kind of ethereal and nebulous and stuff. Yes. And when I help them put their experience actually into words and say mm -hmm. it out loud yes. and they hear it come out of their mouth, yes. then they realize what the experience was and they, they go like, oh, yes. that was real. Yes. That happened to me. Yes. And they own it. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so That's right. So when that voice spoke to you and said you need to say it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you owned it. Then yes. it was yours and you could go forward. Mm -hmm. Right. And believe you, there were so many days during the uh, mass of a mess that ensued <laughs> where I thought I'm going to give up. I'm going to quit. I'm going to walk away. I I don't care how much money I lose. This is too much. I can't do it. And then I would think, but I told them mm. I would do this, and I am a woman of my word. Mm. And I committed that to God, and I'm not going to let anybody down here. Mm. And so that word became a binding force for me to the project. Yeah. Well, people you know that embrace Christianity, the, the Gospel of John starts out with, in the beginning was the, the word. The word. Yes. Yes. There's power in what we speak and say, and, and like you said, it, it becomes a part of us. If we're willing to speak it, mm -hmm. we believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. Many people, I think, they get an idea, but they're like, no, nah, I'm not going to tell anyone, just in case it doesn't work out. Right. So do you see people in, in, in the, the Wholeness Network? You've done a couple events, live events now, where, uh -huh. where you tape these and you invite people to come backstage, if you will, and, and observe a taping, witness it. Yes. Uh, do you see people speaking their truth and owning it and being empowered to go forward from, from having that opportunity to get up there and say it? I believe so. I feel like that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. Both of you have have that experience yeah. as well, but there's something about being willing to declare something, mm -hmm. whether it's a thought, an idea, a movement, and you know, for for you to stand up there, for me to stand up and say, I am standing here for world peace. Mm -hmm. I mean, that felt so ostentatious to say mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. I had to own it. Am I really standing for peace? Yeah. <laughs> Could my I'm a, I'm a mom, I, yeah. I'm insignificant to the world. Could I really stand and make a difference? Mm -hmm. It was a great thought. Mm -hmm. But then the minute I had to step on that stage and say it, mm -hmm. I had to own it. Mm -hmm. I had to believe that. Yeah. It's kind of a metaphor, a microcosm for life, really. I mean, our life. We're standing on a stage. Are we going to say it? Or are we going to do it? Right. You know? Right. Mm. Or are we going to observe and watch others? Right. Yes. Yes. And I think Robin's the perfect example because, like, that's why I asked that question. You couldn't have done it 20 years ago. No. No. And so we shouldn't have expected you to. Yeah. But. Yeah. we can get to a point with some of these tools and techniques and ideas where you can you can yeah yeah and and that's a, that's and so so it's start start at step one mm -hmm. you know and even if your creation is I can have peace in my life you know mm -hmm. that's energy work yeah starting to think about that <laughs> You know, the possibility of I can I can have a day, I can wake up like you, you know, I can wake up yeah. and be happy. And before, without those tools, you, you the answer was, no, I can't. Right. You might have just articulated the next question I was going to ask. <laughs> I was going to ask you, can you give listeners one small step toward tapping into their heart energy yeah. and, and, and living a, a more heart-centered life? Yes, absolutely. Um, we all have the ability. Mm -hmm. So it's not, and there's nobody that is not capable of right. connecting to the heart. We're just not taught to do it. Right. We just don't know how. And so for me, when I begin to connect to my heart, oftentimes I will put my hand on my heart to feel into the physical space, um, 
to feel the heartbeat, even the mm -hmm. pulse of the heart, mm -hmm. and then to allow myself to slow down. Mm -hmm. Because our mind talks like this. Like I'm talking from my mind as I'm doing this interview because I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm talking fast, right? Our yes. mind is like full of the story and full of the details and yes. full of this and full of that. The heart is this beautiful, slow wave, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so as we connect to the heart and allow ourselves to simplify our thoughts, our feelings, our emotion, and then ask a question and feel it mm -hmm. from the heart. Any question? Any question. Mm -hmm. Any question. And you'll start developing this relationship with the heart. Mm -hmm. You'll build trust. Mm -hmm. You'll build um, your confidence. And the beautiful thing about the heart is it will only speak to you on truth. Mm -hmm. And I like that you say, when you ask the question, to feel it, to mm -hmm. feel for mm -hmm. the yeah. answer. Um, being a uh, left brain western medicine trained yes. scientific mind yes seem, not a lot of people teach you that in, right. in school in medical school and things like that right. they teach you to listen to observe to mm -hmm. they don't teach you to stop and feel right absolutely and even as i'm working with clients um, in heart center therapy i connect them to their heart and then we go through a series of questions, uh, but a lot of those questions tap into their emotions. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a talk therapy, we're really connecting into what people are feeling. And if I ask them a question, like, do you remember, when was the first time you felt this way? If they say, well, I can't think of the answer, <laughs> yeah. they've gone back here, right? Okay, well, that's okay that you can't think of it because we're not talking to the mind right now. Let's yeah. connect back to the heart. When was the first time? Well, I can't remember. Okay, well, remembering is here. Let's connect back to the heart. And it's, a, it's really a process to learn that journey from the head to the heart and feel safe and confident there. Yeah. But such an incredible source of truth. And one of the things I love in heart center therapy, I've seen hundreds of clients. I don't, I don't know how many, yeah. but I have never had one single answer for any of my clients. Mm. I connect them to their heart. I help them understand how to dialogue with the heart, to ask mm. and to listen. And in that space of comfort I'm holding for them and that space of love, they hear their own answers. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Time and time and time and time again. Which is what all of us who are involved in this in any way really are hoping to do. Mm -hmm. None right. of us want to have the answers for no, somebody else. Right. No. We want to help people get to the point where they get their own answer. For right. sure. Where they connect to their own divine center mm -hmm. and get their own answers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. true empowerment. True, yes. true empowerment. Yes. In it's some like, ways that's wholeness. Yes. Yes. That, that is it. And that's like the heart to me is like the brain of the spiritual body. You know, like it's, yes. it's they're so similar in their characteristics. Yes. Yeah. So we what, connect what's, that way. If the heart's the brain of the spiritual body, what's the heart of the spiritual body? The heart. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got the mechanism, you know, it's just, the, it's an emotion. It's the, it's that. It's yeah. They're connected. They're connected. And the electromagnetic field of the heart is stronger than the electromagnetic field of the mind. And so to understand that you can create even more from the heart, you can mm -hmm. attract even more from the heart. The pull of the heart has more power than... So like holding that thought or feeling in your heart yeah. will pull it to you even yes. better than the thought. Yes. Brain. Well, and that, that example I gave you a few minutes ago, that's a perfect thing. How many days had I thought, the city better get this yeah, thing going? Yeah. <laughs> you know? We need this. Why isn't the city? I'd had a million thoughts about that <laughs> problem, I assure you. None of them very redeeming. But, you know, yes. I, I could sit and think about that forever, and it wouldn't have changed the outcome. Mm -hmm. But to sit there from my heart and say, 
it is time for this project to move forward mm -hmm. and I am sending it love mm -hmm. and I'm opening the space for all the problems to be healed yeah. for all the people involved to yeah. be ready to move forward yeah and within hours yeah that'll take that's place amazing. well let's use your heart and oh. spiritually create a, a peace rally so oh, what does that yeah. look like what yeah. does that feel like and yeah. Let's speak that. Let's take a minute and speak that from the heart whisper. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just know that there will never be peace out there until the peace starts in here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that again and again in my life, whether it's in my marriage, mm -hmm. my creation. Mm -hmm my relationship with others. If I'm holding a space of contempt for someone but expect them to respond to yeah. me peacefully, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So so that's why the peace rally has to begin here. And I know in the beginning it's going to feel so small, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of hearts have to turn. A lot of hearts have to look within. We have to let go of a lot of grievances mm -hmm. we're holding on to a lot of pain mm -hmm. consciously or unconsciously right we're all walking around on this planet holding on to pain and um one of the things i learned in heart-centered therapy is that a lot of times we don't want to go back and look at the trauma of our life because we don't want to feel the pain mm -hmm. But the truth is, we've already felt that pain. Yeah, we've got it safely tamped away. Right. Um, we don't want to open that <laughs> box again. Right. We think it's tucked away. Yeah. But that pain that we're holding on to and carrying every day mm. is affecting every decision. Yeah. It's affecting every relationship. It's affecting our ability to move forward. Yeah. Right? We try to stake a step. And think, whoa, I did that once and it hurt. Never mind, I'm not taking that step. Yeah. Oh, I trusted someone once and that went bad. Okay, I'm not gonna, yeah. you know. So that pain, whatever that pain is from that yeah. we're all holding on to, it is affecting us every day. Yeah. And so we've got to take that pain and hold it mm -hmm. and look at it and say, I see you. Mm -hmm. I see that you're affecting my life. I know that you exist. Mm -hmm. I believe that you're there. And in that moment of being willing to look at our own pain that we hold, somehow we are validated. Mm -hmm. Somehow we are justified. Gosh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is hard. Yeah. This is hard to carry this weight. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to hold this anymore. Yeah. And we can make a shift. I think I'm ready to let that peace go. Yeah. I can see that this painful memory is no longer serving me. Mm. I can see how this relationship that has scarred me mm -hmm. <laughs> is costing something mm -hmm. in my relationships now. I'm ready to forgive. Mm -hmm. And piece by piece, as we honor that pain and we're willing to let it go, now within each of us is room to mm. hold the state of peace. Mm. And in, in her process and in what she helps you do, you want to give it away. It's not, it's not, you don't have to gear up to let it go. It, <laughs> it, it's like the process makes that just the natural ne next yeah. step. And that is so different because we, we, we kind of just muscle through so much of our right. life. We think that's such a better way to muscle through or to conquer or to overcome. Right. And that's different. If, if there was even better words, but it's, it's letting go and it's saying, I thank you for, you know, what maybe I've learned or, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's a just, it's just naturally letting it go. Mm -hmm. And that's so gentle. As I tell people, it's a gentle, gentle process. It is. And it's helped so many people. And so many people um, just benefit from you holding that space, your soul's dream to hold space, you know, mm -hmm. for healing. Mm -hmm. She does it so well. She does it so well. <laughs> 
So well. So what's coming up for you? Anything exciting in the world? Um, well, I'm very excited uh, to continue to expand the network. Yeah. We're doing a lot of work on the library and the content there. And again, just hoping to get tools into people's hands so that they can find that piece they're searching mm -hmm. for. And also the creation series. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wanting to have that available soon online as a class and also in an ebook form. Yeah. There's so much in there. So <laughs> hang on to your hats. It's so good. It's so good. Um, anybody, anybody wanting to expand their ability to create, you will have plenty of yeah. ideas and tools and techniques to hold on to as you move forward with your creation. I also have the Brave Hearts Retreat that we do yeah. several times a year for different groups and people and mm -hmm. sometimes just general. Mm -hmm. But um, that's always an option to look for the next Brave Hearts if you're ready to heal your heart and, mm -hmm. and build that greater connection with your heart. Yeah. And then I do private sessions, either yeah. in person or over the phone. And there's, so, um, so the heartwhisperer.com. Yes. And there's products that you can buy, special Heart Whisperer products. There's mm -hmm. sessions you can book online. You can... Um, register for classes that are available yeah. it's like got it the heart whisperer has everything heart <laughs> and it's yes good. It's yes good. it's a beautiful beautiful um place to for reference and for for tools and so you can book your time with robin over the phone or in person yeah. A good it's a good one so thank you we're so grateful for you Robin uh, the thank wholeness you. network would be nothing without you <laughs> and her creation is very well put to use <laughs> at the wholeness network thank uh, you keep it keep it up thank the world you. needs you and you are a, you are definitely a peace rally advocate <laughs> <laughs> yes Join. Join, join the peace rally. Join. <laughs> You're all invited. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you to both of you.